thank you to our three sponsors for supporting our podcast. John Russell's Art Caterers and Milltown Pies, who offer fantastic catering services. Alexander Grace Law, who provide modern and client-led legal services. And SBE Furnishings, who offer high-quality furnishings and electrical items at fantastic prices. Well, I don't look like my dad yet. I can give him a chat. And because of my bent legs, Jez, <laughs> I should have had calipers and I have a very flat head, so I should have had a helmet as well. I mean, can I be any more awkward than I usually am? You can cut that out. And then Johnny replied with, what you on about? Your real name's Graham. Morden! Morden! Send more house to save the house! Right, good evening all, and welcome to another episode of the Housecast. Here we are, another recording that we're all getting together to do. Did one last week, which was very entertaining. Uh, went on for uh, for quite a while, and I'm sure you'll uh, you've all have enjoyed it and heard it. The old Frank Entwistle one. Um, things haven't changed a great deal. We're still in lockdown around our areas, and uh, we're trying to get a few more guests on. So this evening we've got a guest. It wasn't that difficult in, in getting him on. I think he got coaxed on by his flat-headed younger brother who needs calipers. Um, so we've got Joe Martin. Joe, how's it going? Yeah, I'm very well, thanks, Jess. How are you? Yeah, good, thank you. I don't mean guests. guests. I don't mean Joe's the, the guest. Sorry, uh, listeners. I don't mean Joe's the guest. He's, uh, he's ho- co-hosting it with me. So you've been up to much. I know you're still on your course. How's that going? Yeah, it's good. Um, yeah. It's the closest I've been to any humans for a while. Um, yeah, yeah. And obviously we, um, with social distancing and whatever. But uh, yeah, I've been on a course. had a fall last week. Um, right. had a fall, fall when I was out running. I slipped on a grate uh, and, I, uh, and I hurt my hip. Hang uh, on. You say you slipped on a grate? <laughs> on a grate. On a grate. On a grate. On a grate. Sorry. Grate. <laughs> I thought you said you slipped on a grate. Well, that's good that your um, your basic wicket keeping course is going well. I, uh, I hope you get through it and you pass okay. Um, the other one, we've got another great host um, who's on with us this evening, going back in time and a legend of the club, got trophies galore. It's Mr. Joe Benaducci. How are you doing, Joe? All right, Jess, thank you. Are you okay? Yeah, yeah, good, thanks. Yeah, quite... Uh, Quite busy at the moment, a few bits and bats of things going on and selling loads of sweets, so that's working well. So we'll, we'll move on to our guest. Um, cricketer, who I still think seems a really young lad, but he's played for the club for donkey's years. A real stalwart of the club, has still got many, many great years ahead of him. Top bloke, tries his nuts off all the time and a very, very talented cricketer. It's Joe Bro- Joe's brother, Paddy Martin. How are you going, Paddy? Very well, thank you, Jez. Thanks for having oh, me on. No, that's no, it's great. I'm glad I um, uh, really appreciate you coming on. Um, Joe mentioned it you know, a, a few months ago about getting you on, and then we were going through a list of guests, and then myself and Dooch and Matt Stanley said, well, you know, let's get Paddy on. That'll be a really good episode. We can um, listen to, you know, to, to how, you've, what, how you've developed at the club. But your brother said he didn't want you on. Um, but... <laughs> But anyway, we've we've managed to persuade him and get you on. So, Paddy, what have, um, what have you been up to for the last the last few months? Is how is it? Has lockdown been treating you in winter? Uh, not too bad. I've been I've been at school working, so it's fairly right. Busy okay. Still trying to right, dodge okay. the uh, virus there. Best right, I can. Must be difficult. Must be difficult. That if because uh, your kids are around you. Yeah, very much so. They've got a lot of things in place. Um, does it feel safe? Does it? Is it something uh, that you're comfortable with? Or yeah, I'm quite lucky. I can sit in my office and just keep away from them. <laughs> um, right. But this obviously there's a few cases every week, yeah. so yeah. Whether they're getting it at the school, I don't know. But yeah, hopefully it's not much longer. 
No, it's difficult. I mean, I do think, you know, it's good that the, the kids are going back and they try and get back some sort of normality. I think we mentioned on, on the last one, Blaise and Lindsay have had it, haven't they? But thankfully, they've, uh, they haven't had really severe symptoms. So I think they've got through it. I chatted to Blaise not long ago. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, so that's, uh, you know, that, that's good that you're getting back in there. Are you doing any training? You keep yourself fit for the season? Uh, not yet. <laughs> No, uh, I keep pl- well. I was playing golf before uh, this lockdown. Right, uh, playing on Sunday, hopefully. Right, th- yeah. Snow permitting, I believe. Yes. Right. Okay. So that'll be it until probably January. Then I might right. think about it. Right. So you don't do much training, do you? Because your brother does quite a lot of running, doesn't he? He, uh, he, he does running. Himself, I uh... have a very much hate-hate relationship with running. Right. Oh, I thought you were going to say with Joe. <laughs> Well, that's also true, but more running. <laughs> so I'll go through periods, Jez, of running for two or three weeks and then sack it off and then yeah. do it a few months later. Boring, isn't it? Okay. It's so boring. It is boring. It's not boring. The, it's, it's, it's methodical and it, it takes boring. your mind off things. For somebody that, you know, being left alone with their own thoughts isn't a great thing. <laughs> um going out running is a real way of making them sort of linear. I don't mean they're like weird, bad thoughts. It just means I have a lot of thoughts uh, that need that need arranging. Um, I'm hopeful, Jez, that football will be back starting this uh, this weekend so I can get back to playing that as well. All right, OK. So it would be, what's the amateur scene like in Berlin now? Is there obviously no football being played? Uh, no. Uh, our team is not great. <laughs> is it not? Uh but I enjoy it, so can't complain. Ah, yeah, exactly. No, you've got to keep, you know, get you out in the bay, get some fresh air in, and keeps you have fit you, for the cricket got, season. Have you got anybody in that team who uh, who we might know? Any list uh, that the listeners might know? Anybody in that team apart from yourself? Probably just Ben Utley. Ben Utley, what's he like as a footballer? Some some Ben Utley's uh, footballing style and ability up for us. Uh, on the floor. On the floor. Well, he dies a lot. That's where he spends most of his time, yeah. Is that literally and metaphorically? Really? Uh, yes, both. <laughs> Is he good when he stands right, yeah. on his feet? Mm. He's all right. He just regularly confronts the uh, biggest guy on their team, really. And then right. ends up led on the floor and, they, and it all starts again. All right. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, it's very <laughs> interesting. Very interesting, Paddy. Right, we'll go on to your cricket career, Paddy. Let's have a little uh, discussion about your early days when, I mean, I can certainly remember you and, and your brother and your sister and your mum and dad coming down. Your uncle, Jez, was down there. I mean, I, I take it it was just a given that from, you know, almost, you know, as, as young as probably none, that you'd be coming down to the lower house and that you would be, you know, you know, following in your uncle Ian and uncle David and Michael played down there. Just tell us what you remember about those early years of you being down the cricket club before we move on to the um, the junior section. Well, obviously, as you said, Chez played. Uh, my granddad helped a bit with the ground, obviously yeah, with, yeah. with Jeff as well. Yeah. Um, my mum and dad did the tease for a while for the second team yeah um and then obviously michael were playing as well yeah so strong family connection really and i can only i can only ever remember being down there i don't really remember no so it's oh that's the first time i went down i can just yeah. remember always being there really yeah what's the age difference between you and joe uh two years Right, okay. Because I, I mean, I'm racking my brain. I, I don't know, dude. Can you remember when, you know, little Joe Martin used to be James Bond and being in his uh, his dinner suit? You can remember he, that. Yeah, he, he didn't just have James Bond, Jez. I mean, don't don't get tunnel visioned by this. He did have a couple of other outfits that he wore as well. Oh, go on. Um, the ones that stick him out. Paddy, Paddy will be able to help us with this, but I, I do remember him having a a maroon blazer, a West Indies style maroon blazer. But he also used to dress up as a woman. All right. Well, that's interesting. He used to have a dress that he wore. Mm. 
Very strange. Right. Joke. That's inaccurate to say the least. <laughs> but um, I did. I dressed up as Brian Lawridge. As I had, um, I used to put my whites on, my West Indies shirt, my um, maroon blazer, and my West Indies sun hat. And I did used to come as um, Brian Lara. But you know, I did used to come as James Bond and a mix of Michael Ball and Michael Bolton when I used to sing on the steps. Michael Ball was the best yeah. one, Jez, because at home we used to have sort of a knee-high toy box, which right. would be Michael Ball's, in inverted commas, stage. Um, All right, yeah. So Joe used to have a pair of, I mean, he'd probably be only 19 at the time, but he had a pair of... <laughs> <laughs> uh, I had a pair of Cuban heels. Yeah, but he had a like a pair of button-up jammers. So he'd wear oh, the yeah, up shirt with a tie and then have my mum <laughs> my mum's high heel boots on. And no, at this, that, oh god. That's true. And then at this time he'd gone through his phase of being at his um tap dancing lessons. So he'd be singing his Michael Balls with the uh what did he use as his microphone? I had a microphone. Yeah, he had his own microphone. So he used right. to have his microphone in one hand and you could hear the banging of his boots on the uh, wooden toy box as he was right. belting out his Michael Ball favourites. So who'd be watching him then? Uh, no, one. no one, really. I'm gonna, you, don't, you just carry on about your business in the house. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it, it was never not normal for him to be dressed up or something. We went to the James Bond Museum in Leeds. Right. Was, no, it was, it was the Royal Armouries oh, Museum. Whatever it was, sorry. That's, James that's Bond Museum's point. in Keswick. Uh, but he was dressed as James Bond. <laughs> and he had his, his right. toy James Bond gun with him. Right. Uh, he got out in the uh, museum, <laughs> which caused a bit of a stir because the security guards came over because it weren't as uh, stringent then. There were none of the orange um, stuff on front of them to show the toys. So, right. to a, it could have been real. Well, yeah. So there's seven-year-old Joe dressed as James Bond with security guards running around him. Right. I mean, the, the reason I bring it up, and it, I don't want this to be about Joe, really, it was because I was wondering, you know, what I remembered about you, you know, and, and your mum and dad and sister at the same time, because Joe just obviously hogged the, the limelight. I'm, I'm just wondering whether... You know, Susan and uh, and Graham should have been reported to the child protection <laughs> unit at, at some stage. You're having a, a seven year old James Bond with a semi automatic going into a museum. <laughs> well, if you can, if it were, can imagine, if it were nowadays, it'd be all over TikTok and, and yeah. Instagram yeah. and all sorts. He'd have, he'd have, they probably would have got picked up by police by now because somebody, had, somebody yeah. would have seen it. Yeah. Without a doubt, and, and Joe possibly could have been shot by the local marksman, the police marksman who uh, yeah. mistook him for a for a mass murderer. So anyway, yeah. Paddy, what were your what were you doing then around that time when Joe was making a, a fool of himself? Um, I've I've been playing cricket then, so I started when I was uh, six. Right. Okay. Started What's your playing. memories around that? Well, I were obviously down there during the games and stuff at weekends. Yeah, uh, I'd got my first set of pads for Christmas one year, on right. my birthday. I'm not too sure, and I was just playing on the side in front of the club room uh, with uh, probably my dad. And then Jeff came over because I'd got my pads on wrong, <laughs> and uh, just saw the saw the padding that goes around your shins. Yeah. It used to be two uh, like belts sort of thing, and I'd right. put my legs through those and got them round the back of the yeah. legs. <laughs> right. um, oh, bless. So Jeff came over and sorted them out and then invited me down on a Wednesday night. Brilliant. So I think Brilliant. that was just before Stan had taken over, but I might be wrong. That's what year would that have been? Uh, 97, you. something like that. <clears throat> right, yeah, it would have been around that time, wouldn't it, when Stan started sticking over, maybe yeah. a little bit a little bit later. So you came through, you were coming into the, the latter end of the old academy with the, uh, you know, practising on the outfield and probably not yeah. a lot of organisation, but a lot of, you know, willingness and great volunteers. And then 
Sam's career is coming to an end. He's got his uh, his dodgy knees, and he's he's finishing. What was it like? I, can you remember what it was like at the early days of that, the, the setting up of that? You know, the the junior section changing completely f- as it had been for twenty years. What was it that like? Yeah. Um... Well, I, actually, I went on Stan's level two course as one of the kids who were being coached at the time. All right, yeah. Um, and that's where we met Nigel, I think. All right. Um, so obviously Nigel came in and started from there. Uh, I can just remember the training used to be at the Thompson Centre. Um, and the In winter, it was at the Thompson Centre. Yeah, sorry, yeah. The yeah. winter nets would be there. And... There must have been, there were probably 40 there then, which compared to a couple of years before was yeah, yeah. massive. Yeah. Um, so I was, I would have been eight, nine, something like that. Kept getting put in the under 15s net, which I didn't really like. Um, so I've regularly feigned an injury to stay in my own net. <laughs> <laughs> Paddy, um, Paddy. Um, I, and you were off spinner from start, were you? you know, no, I started off bowling rapid, Jez. All right. Um, but I didn't have any cricket boots, really, for my first two or three years playing. So it was proving a bit difficult to stay, stay on my feet in right. these uh, sort right. of like conditions. Right. Um, and then one of the coaches was called John Riley, who's done a lot of work at various clubs. Maybe yeah. I've played against him, Jez, I don't know. Hey, Todd. Okay. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and he asked me what, why I was bowling pace because I'm only ever going to be five foot eight. Right. Uh, and I am currently five foot eight until I grow a bit more. Right. So I started bowling spin from then and tried to right, ever brilliant. since. Yeah. So See, as a kid, Jez, made. sorry, as a kid, right. he had very heavy feet. So you've heard of the whispering death. Stan labelled him thundering death <laughs> when he was running in. Right. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Right. The other issue with that was it was because I had trainers on. So if they got a bit wet, they were flip flopping all over my feet. Yeah. Right, see. And linked to the pad thing as well, Jez. There was an incident at Salisbury where he was batting and running between the wickets, and one of his pads fell off. And rather than going to <laughs> going to get back in, he turned back and got his pad on and we run out. <laughs> The bills came off as I got my second strap back on. <laughs> <laughs> and you just shouted, no! <laughs> uh, yeah, I got told off after that game, actually, I think, off stand. I bet. I bet. So how was your batting? What were you, uh, how, how did you find the batting? The first shot that I learnt off Jeff was a forward defence, and probably until this day I still stuck with that. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I, I was very stodgy. Uh, as I still am. Uh, my first game, I, could, I got bowled out my first game. Missed a forward defence. So. Right, okay, but okay. I did get a wicket in my first game at church. Yeah. I remember that. Right. Um, right. And it's quite good because all the players, I was probably eight, I think. Seven, maybe. Right. But everyone else in the team was older. And were that under 13s, do you think? That would have been under 11s. Under 11s, okay. Yeah. They were going then, yeah. So... It's quite good now when you're playing to see all the ones who were playing at that time just watching on the side and they've yeah. still got some affinity to the club. Yeah, yeah, no, fantastic. And then you've obviously gone through the different age groups. Who was, you know, we've had this discussion with Dooch before about the Rugrats and the different groups of people because people come through in groups. So who would have been in the gr- your group of, of junior cricketers that we know or... Um, there wasn't anybody really my my year group at school, if that makes right. sense. Right, yeah. Um, Matt Walker was a year below. Uh, okay, so I played, yeah. I played a lot of cricket with Matt from a, yeah. a young age when, yeah. he came, when he eventually moved from Burnley. Um, yeah. And then above me were Lewis, Sean, uh, Ben another couple of years older than that. Yeah, right, okay. Uh, and then obviously lower down was John, his age group, cause right. people like Johnny. That. Yeah. Johnny. Yeah. What, about, what about Max Howells? Where did he fit into that? Um, 
Max was the year below me, and I think Max came under 15, Joe, would that oh, be right? right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so he, right. he was uh, probably, yeah, under 15s when he came. Right, brilliant. So, see much of that. Uh, going through that era, many trophies, you know, many great performances. You want to tell us about um, As a junior? Yeah. Uh, not really. No. Uh, we, we never particularly had a really strong side because the better juniors were Joe's age, so two years below, didn't really play in my age group. Right. And then Ben and his age group were obviously a bit older and Scott were a bit older. Yeah, so I yeah. was kind of in the middle of the two. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, two it's, packs, really. Yeah, yeah. So you've gone through the junior sections there. What about when you started making inroads to getting into the senior sides? Do you remember that? Yeah, uh, my debut for the thirds, I think, was against Haslingdon. Right. Um, I don't think I, I may have bowled actually, but my first ball I got hit square in the chest off a beamer. Oh dear. Um. <laughs> yeah, and that genuinely that is all I can remember from the game. <laughs> a fast bowler or a... yeah, yeah, seam bowler straight in my right. chest. Did you cry? No, I said no. carried on. Right, oh, that's strong. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I'd learnt off that's... Jeff. Yeah, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And just turn the other cheek. So that's so that's you. Who was in the thirds then? Who what what? Who was in the side? Do you remember? Oh, good question. Stephen Wait played. All right. If you can remember, Steve. Uh, decent bowler, actually, Steve. Um, yeah. Great question, Jeff. I can't really Who remember. Who were captain? Uh, it would have been Adam, I think. All right. So, my, yeah, my first few games would have been under Adam. All right, sure. okay. Or Steve, because Steve... Because when Adam started playing in the second more, Steve was captain. All right. I, would, I can't think of what senior players would have been in that. Uh, Duke, Duke Kieran Tarr. All right, yeah. Yeah, people... Too long ago, Jess. Uh, you can't Jess, remember. I've got a scorecard up here from. Uh, yes, I have. As part of that team, there was Adam, Paddy, and Ryan Clegg. Maddie. Ryan Clegg, yeah. Ooh. Oh yeah, yeah. Maddie Hussain, Hawkey, Paddy Howley, Kieran Ty, Mickey Lee, um, Steve Waite, and Lewis Smith, the wicketkeeper. Mm-hmm. Pete Smith. Yeah. Like, Pete Smith's a big uh, podcast fan. Oh, good. Pete Smith? Uh, yeah. Oh, right. But Smitty got hit in his eye with a bail peak. Can you remember that? Yes, at Longridge. Yeah. Good lad, Smitty. Yeah, he still comes on to watch, which is good to see. <laughs> so you've got yourself in the thirds there a little bit. You're getting a few performances. And then when did you start pushing in the seconds? How old were you then? Uh, so I think it was a year... The year after I may have played my first game. Or right. was it that year? Uh, my, 2005. My, fir- my first game for the seconds, I think, was Nicky as captain in a cup right. game. In a cup game that ended up going into a Monday. Because um, it had obviously run out of time on the Sunday. Yeah. Um, I can't really remember it, Jess, to be honest. The game. No. Uh, but right, I right, remember so- Nicky being captain. I have the scorecard. Right. Great. <laughs> Go on then. What year was that, Joe? So it was 2005. Um, Nicky was captain. Uh, Rotten Soul got 210. So I would have... Covers. I think I'd have made my third team debut that year as well. Potentially. There's no third 11 fixtures, unfortunately. Because I can only remember playing with the words the cup winners on the shirt. Right. Fair enough. And we lost that game. Nicky was captain. He got eight, batting at batting at seven. Uh, Paddy, you got three, caught and bowled. We got 158. You didn't bowl. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think we were really short. And why Nicky was captain. <laughs> I don't remember Nicky captain at second 11. Oh, I, don't. I, I think it was just genuinely a game where we'd no players. Um, and they needed someone to captain. Because Nicky had stopped playing in 2000 and... He didn't play in 2004. I don't think he played in 2003. I can remember him playing some... Might have been captain in some third 11 games. Because right. I can remember him batting with Zeeshan. Right. Zeeshan Malik. 
Cracky, who'd have thought it? Who'd have thought they, it? They, they were the players that I used to uh, do the tins for. So right. I did those for a few years. I did the Worsley Cup final. All right. 2004. Uh, and then a couple of years before that and a couple of... Well, probably only another year after that, really. Yeah. Uh, but for four or five years before that, I'd done it. Um, which I really enjoyed. I can't, what, what's your memories around doing the tins for the uh, the Worsley Cup final? Uh, it's, all, and... it's all a bit of a blur, to be honest. But the only thing I remember is Phil um, shouting at me at the end. Because right. I was that eager to get onto the field. I was spinning the tins as fast as I could to get them off. And he was shouting because people wanted to take a picture and look at it. <laughs> Whereas I... Who scored, who scored the final? Uh, good question. It might have been... Uh, I couldn't tell you. Kaz, maybe? Right. Caroline, perhaps? Cleggy did it for a few years, Pete. Yeah, it might have been Ryan Clegg. I can't, I can't remember the scorer. No, I can't. I mean, I'm, I'm sure someone on this podcast Cast one of us four will have that scorebook, I'm sure, but and Stan's looking for it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I've, not, I've only got one as you know, and it's not that year. Um, somebody will know who scored the final though. So, if um, when this yeah. finally goes to air, can someone get in touch and tweet us and tell us who scored yeah. the Where's the Cup final, please? Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. so I remember spinning the tin round and just sprinting down the stairs as fast as I could to get on the field. And then obviously try and join in with the celebrations. Can you remember it vividly or? Uh, I just remember getting shouted at vividly, Jez. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Phil. Yeah, bless him. So then, so you start developing yourself into, you know, into a regular second team cricketer. What, what, some memorable games have you got around the, the second team? You know, some funny moments or some, you know, good performances? Just before, Paddy, just before you start, Matt Marquis on, on his podcast did say that your collections paid for their yeah. end of season trips on more than one occasion. Yeah, so you, must did, have yeah. some, you must have some performances in there. Yeah, 2007 I had a, a really good year. Uh, runs and wicket. I only played half the games, but I, I may have been second run scorer and leading wicket taker. But I'd been my first team debut that year, so I was in and out of the side. But whenever I did play, I seemed to do really well. Um, I think we finished second that year under yeah. Paul. And from a personal point of view, that was the best season I'd ever had. Yeah. And probably ever will have. Uh, I think I'd nearly 500 runs after I'd only played 13 games that year. Yeah, 431 runs and 30 odd, games. 30 odd wickets. Yeah. Um, and then I was promised an Xbox game at the end of the season from all the collections and... I'm not hoping it'll come this week at some point. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone else sucked it. Everyone else thanked yeah. all your collections. Yeah. Yeah. So I'd have been but, 16. And they were all going to Blackpool, I think. Then, so did you not go? Just to. Well, no. I was, I was promised a Xbox game, which I was far more interested in, Jez. Right, I see. Um, so, can you remember any of the performances? You obviously did very well with bat and ball. Can you, can you remember any that? Uh... Um, I can remember. I don't know if that the season after it might have been. I was on eighty odd with a couple of overs left. Uh, obviously, thinking this was my big chance to get hundred. Yeah. Uh, I was in with Matt Marquis, and he said, "Right, if you if you don't get a one off this, if you don't get a six off this ball, you're not going to get it. So we'll not bother." <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, and I didn't get it, Jess. No. Um, uh, P, that was 2008, and yeah, that coincided after. with my debut as well. Excellent. I don't remember that. Um, we, batted, we batted a long time together. Uh, you got 89, I got 51. M- would have been one for the purists, I think, that, Joe. If we'll see what year that. was that, Joe? Uh, 2008, you can find it in the miscellaneous games. Um, the what games? <laughs> I'm not good with words. Michelinus. 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 Sounds French, that Joe. Oh. Um, Michelle's anus. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, I would describe our partnership as turgid. Yeah, fair. And then the week after, I obviously got picked again the week after. Sorry to make this about me. I got picked the week after, and after we'd come in from the game, um, Dooch didn't know I'd been picked, and he asked me how I felt about getting 50 and then being dropped the week after. 
after. I think, Jez, the, the first game of that season was Church in 2007. I think we've we got 260 or something like that, only one wicket down. Right. Um, Phil Edmondson got a big 100. I got 70-odd, and then I think I got five wickets as well. You did? And there, were, there were two or three games where I got 50 and five wickets, um, which obviously not happened much since. I was I was in between. I was good enough for the second, obviously, and then but needed in the first, and I wasn't quite... I don't think I was quite ready for the first team. Yeah, and so what year would that have been? Two, 2007. Seven. Right, it was okay. a really wet season as well, that one. Right. Um, so I felt I was competing in the second team fairly well. Fairly well. Yeah. Uh, probably should have stepped up to the first team, but didn't realise it was my opportunity, really. Yeah. Do, can you remember much? Because obviously... You, you know, the side was going from strength to strength from the, the cup victory in 2004 to five to six to seven. Uh, you remember, remember much about Paddy and his, his, his ability and whether you thought he was going to make it in the first team or not? Well, not, not from his first team exploits because he didn't really get to do much, like he said, at that early stage. But obviously, we all knew from being yeah. around the club about Paddy and Joe and how good they were both going to be. And... It was only really a matter of time, but like he said, he, he was in that unfortunate spot, really, of being excellent in the seconds, but you get called up to the first team and you don't get to do much. We've discussed yeah. it at length, haven't we, that? Yeah. And you, yeah. Sometimes you just have to, you know, sit on your hands and just wait for the wait for the right moment. I was, yeah. I was actually fairly lucky because we had a great captain in Finchie and I think I opened the batting in the first team four or five times. But, again, I was probably too naive to realise that was my chance to step up and just thought, oh, I'm just filling in this week, it doesn't matter what happens. Right. Um, you played 11 games that year. Yeah. I How think old I, would you have been? 16. Uh, I think and I you opened were tiny, four. Weren't you? You, were, you were yeah. very small for 16, weren't you? Yeah. And I've... I've opened for I opened against Burnley as well at Burnley. Right. Um, I got six, I think, and I just I wasn't ready to open. Well, I didn't think I was anyway. Yeah. So that made it a bit tricky going up into the first team. Yeah, and when you think the side, you know, some good amateurs as well. Then you know, there's a good side. Yeah, yeah. There are a lot of good players, and we were, you know, we were obviously going places then. Um, so Finchie was captain two thousand and seven, two thousand and eight. Uh, on and off and walked away, came back on and off and then came back again. Um, what you, know, you say was an interesting uh, to play under Finch of captain. What do you mean by that? I don't, I wouldn't know how to describe Finch's captaincy. <laughs> I can just remember him. The problem with Finch was he was probably at that time our best bowler and probably also our best batter. Yeah. Bled in the pro, dude. And he was captain, and it's Finchie. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, so that just made it. I think it was just a little bit too much for him. <laughs> right. Uh, but I, I love Finch to Peter. So if he were captain for ten years, I'd still, still yeah. be playing under him. Gordon, Gordon, send more house to save the house.